Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to The Geek Group. Today we're doing a rather fun autopsy. This is just a light little one. I am deeply addicted to radio controlled helicopters and because some of the blog viewers have a particularly annoying sense of humor, they sent in this. Now this is a little, uh, it, it charges on the thing and then you turn it on you press the button, and it used to it used to fly. It doesn't fly because it's a very high quality helicopter. <laughs> they spared no expense, and and you can tell because there was no expense in the design and manufacture of this particular helicopter. And I think it's really cool that we live in a time where you can get coaxial helicopter bouncy balls that probably cost like about as much as a pack of toilet paper. And, and it works, it, it flew, it worked really well until Stephen the Heathen destroyed it because he's violent and he's mean and he hates any manner of joy in the world. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna autopsy this and just have some fun with it because I think we might be able to make it spin and do stuff again. Now normally I'd take apart all the top and work my way down, but because I wanna maybe make this spin again, we're actually going to work from the bottom up. Um, and we'll talk about fly bar systems and stuff like that as we go. But we're gonna start by cutting off the outer shell and see what we can find inside. So I'm just gonna pry this back. because I, I want to not destroy the delicate goodness within, at least as much as possible. Oh, it's styrofoam. Oh, we could just dip the whole thing in acetone and melt it off. Uh, what do we got here? We've got, you can see, that's our battery. There's a motor and the gear drive, and the motor's probably just become disengaged from the gear drive. And then we've got a simple circuit board here. So we're gonna keep digging down and see what else we can see. Okay, so we'll get rid of the shell. We don't need that. Uh, just cute little LiPo battery. The, uh, the battery is 70 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts. It's cute. And I think I found our problem. Either the motor is pushed up or the gear train is pushed out. So I think resetting this pin like that, that should allow us to fly now. I'm gonna reset this pin as well. Put that in a little tighter. And now if I push the button and hold that clear, and turn it on. Well, it's moving. So that's, that's progress. <laughs> I think I made them too tight. Let's try that again. What are you doing, gear drive? It's all, it's all gunged up now. Let's try levering this out just a little bit. Cause I got everything tight, but now it's all too tight. Nope, it's screwed. The teeth are all stripped off from it being so, yeah, you can shut up anytime. You could stop that. So it's either too tight or it's too loose. This is, this is high quality manufacturing here. Yeah, now that's too tight to turn. Hmm. All right, so what we've got 
is there's a gear drive here, one motor, and that drives both coaxial shafts. So the little brass gear there on the side goes to the little can motor. And uh, it goes through a gear drive and it reduces it down. And it makes the two shafts spin in opposite directions at the same speed. And because of that, because one's pushing one way and one's pushing the other way, it counterbalances itself in flight and all the weight's down here. So that gives you, your, there is no direction control and it just basically hovers. Now, to keep the blades balanced out, there's fly bars on top. And this top one's broken, he's missing a link, but there's still one link there, so it still works, it's just not balanced. And this gives us a, a very simple gyroscopic balancing. If it tilts this way, this, the, the fly bar wants to go horizontal, so it's gonna tilt the rotor back, and you can see it tilts it like that. And it's a very rudimentary cyclic control based on centrifugal force. So that's how that works. And you see this in pretty much all the little coaxial copters. They'll, they'll have a basic fly bar system on them. And you can see the fly bar system used on much, much more advanced helicopters. Uh, my Blade SR still has a fly bar on it. So it's, it's really simple cyclic auto control to a limited degree. So that's how it works. Um, there really isn't a lot more to it. We can, we'll take the battery off here. Let's, let's break it down to its component parts. I'm, gonna leave, I'm actually going to leave the battery and everything on there. I'm going to try and remove the motor intact. It's held in with a bit of glue. Because now what I have is a radio controlled motor. And it's rechargeable and all of this should still work. And the motor should work just fine. It works great. So that works. And the little sensor still works. So this whole thing still actually works. And you can plug it into the charger and it'll light up and this is, this is now charging and doing its thing. So that whole system still works. We've got a power supply, we got a motor, we got a little board, and I'm going to hand this off to Mr. LeMay, who is the director of electronics department, and let him see if he can come up with some nifty application for that. I have no idea what he'll do because he's kind of weird, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So you'll actually see this in some manner of nifty upcoming project. I'm just gonna set that there and let it charge. Now on the other side, we've got, oh, it's cool, if you, now without the motor to bog it down, if you turn one side, you'll see the other side turn. And this is just a simple coaxial helicopter. So there really isn't a lot there as to how that works. And this, because the, the Steven the Heathen destroyed it, will never fly again, and that's just sad because I'm a helicopter guy and I like things that fly. But there really isn't a lot to take apart here. There's just a basic fly bar system and two rotor units. So nothing special. If this was like a big, cool Bell Hiller head or something, I'd get into it. But there's, there's nothing to see here. And that's all there is. So that's our entire autopsy on the cute little viewer mail bouncy ball that we turned into the Juggalo Santa. Because we're nerds. Is your Juggalo Santa because we're from Michigan. We're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So everybody here has to appreciate the Juggalo. It's what we do. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.